Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to bring back to Montreal Johnny Jellybean. Good morning, Ted Ziegler, and welcome morning. back to Montreal. It's great to be back. I didn't shake a hand when I came in. I'll shake it down. And it's okay. a pleasure to, to meet you and to hear so much leading up to this week about mm. uh, the, just the Im impact that Johnny Jellybean had in, in yeah. Montreal. Well, don't believe all of it. No? You know okay. I mean? you know, you know, we'll, we'll play it cool. You know, I mean, some of it's true, I'm sure. <laughs> The number to call is 1-800-363-9995. We are reminiscing with Ted Ziegler this morning. Uh, a lot of memories for our viewers this morning. If, uh, let me ask you, what do you remember about Johnny Jellybean? 1-800-363-9995. Does anybody out there? Does anybody <laughs> out there? Does anybody Let's hope so. There? Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Uh, let me ask you, take us back 30 years uh, before the show went on the air. Where did Johnny Jellybean come from? Well, uh, basically, I was asked to come up and, uh, and interview for the show mm -hmm. by a producer who produced a show uh, in Chicago, and I was uh, called Uncle Bucky in that show. And it was also called Lunchtime Little Theater. Uh, in the meantime, I went to Australia and came back and then back to Chicago, and they asked me to come up and, in, and uh, audition for it. So I came up and auditioned. That was in 1962. And uh, I auditioned for it, and I was fortunate enough to get the show. Yeah. And it was an incredible impact. It was progressive television for its time here in the city. Did you know that the, the impact would be incredible as it was? I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. But uh, the show was uh, our show, so to speak. Yeah. It was the crew. Everybody participated. Um, you know, it, it was everybody's show as far as the, uh, the crew was concerned. You know? Yeah, Maury the mailman the, was uh, <laughs> one of four floor managers, I understand. Uh, yeah, very, oh yeah, yeah. Whoever was on duty at that time was Maury. I did all the voices and everything. Uh, I later did Maury the mail, mail boy. No they boy. called him the mail boy because okay. he was only 132 years old. <laughs> He'd be 162 years old today. And he's still around somewhere in this studio, as a matter of fact, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, and, oh, Maury, you, you, you got to have a little respect for your elders, was, you know, his bit. And, um, and I used some of that voice in uh, the series I did, Heathcliff. The uh, gotcha. cartoon series in, in the United States, and I used Maury's voice for that. Oh, really? Sort of purposely, you know. We have the good old squawk box. <laughs> yeah. This one is indestructible. Uh... Yeah, that's indestructible, definitely. <laughs> uh, maybe with this hammer I could do something with it, but we had, um, uh, we didn't have hammers. We had, uh, what was it the, the guys were saying? Mallets. Mallet. That's right. We had mallets. Six different size mallets that were made by uh, Bill Brown and um, Mr. Chips. Yeah, Mr. Chips, that's right. right, yeah. And I understand as well, there was always a puff of smoke that went up, and there, there were some gags pulled on you from time to time, that being well, one of them. Well, there wasn't always a puff of smoke. It was almost anything would happen, you know, <laughs> when I'd hit it. And it was on springs, of course. And uh, the idea was, am I going to break the box this week or, or this day? Or, and Bill made about 20 at a time, 20 of those squawk boxes at a time, and stacked them up back in the uh, carpenter shop, you know. That's great. The yeah, yeah, number yeah. to call is 1-800-363-9995. Good morning, Linda, in Lakefield. You're on AM Live. Good morning. Hi, Linda. Hi. The, Ted Ziegler, one of my favorite, favorite people. I grew up with you. And I was just wondering, I followed you when you went to the Carol Burnett show, and I was just wondering what you had been doing ever since then. I, had, I saw your name here and there, but nothing steady like you had been doing on Carol Burnett. And I was just wondering what happened. Well, I only did six Carol Burnett shows, and then I did the uh, Andy Williams show prior to that, mm -hmm. and then from the Andy Williams show, I went into the uh, Sonny and Cher show. Oh, yes, I remember you there, yeah. Bits and Pieces. Well, it was very nice to speak to you. Nice. We, oh, I grew up with you. I appreciated you very much. You are funny. You still <laughs> are. Take care of yourself, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, Linda, Nicole. right? You're, you're, still, you're still in the business behind the scenes. Though. Yes, Manage yeah. I, I do. Well, I'm in management now, but I do voiceovers and things like that, too, commercials once in a while, but um, not on camera, just uh, voice work. And I'm in management now, managing writers. As a matter of fact, four of the six writers that I manage are from Canada. And I understand some of the top writers in the business. Yeah. Tonight's really show. Are. The Tonight Show, that was, uh, that's Nichols and Vickers, right. uh, Andrew Nichols and Daryl Vickers. They're from Oshawa. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's uh, two, two writers now that I'm working with that we're trying to get in and go with them. And they're brilliant writers. And they're from Montreal. Ah. Um, uh, Rakoff and, uh, uh, let's see, it's uh, Rakoff. I always screw up the names because I have Nichols and Vickers. And <laughs> I get a how name. And people say... Rickles and Dickers and Rickles and Dow guys, <laughs> and I try to straighten them out, you know. But uh, Howard Nemitz and Simon Rakoff, and from they're Montreal. both from Montreal. They're brilliant writers, very, very good, and, uh, and we're trying to do things with them. Um, uh, 
they should take advantage of them up here just like they should have taken advantage of, uh, of uh, Nichols and Vickers. Mm. You know, I mean, give the uh, Canadians, Canadians a chance, you know what I mean? A little plug for the entertainment. Absolutely, the absolutely for the, for the guys. Yeah. Let's go back to our callers. Good morning, Lauren in Point Clair. You're on AM Live with Johnny, Ted. Hi, Ted. How are you doing? Fine. Hi, Lauren. This Hi. Is? Yeah. I waited in line for you at a Dairy Queen <laughs> when I was seven years old in 1965. No kidding. It was winter time. My oh. mother kept wanting to leave. I said, no, he's going to come. <laughs> you showed up an hour late. You really? flew in. You handed out some plastic item or something like that and flew out. I was so disappointed. I mean, I did get to see you, and it was a thrill, but I was so disappointed. Can you give me a good bash at the squawk box to, uh, you know, pay me back? Well, I can hit it, but I don't know if anything will happen. Well, you know. at least one. Oh, there Ooh, you go. Hey, a good sound. You made me happy. Ah. <laughs> a good sound, yeah. And never used a hammer, but uh, that was good enough. Huh? Well, thanks a lot, Ted. Hey, my pleasure. Take I'm care. sorry I had to wait. Well, what can I tell you? Right? Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks for your call, Lauren. Good morning. Richard in Point St. Charles. You're on AM Live with Ted Ziegler. Good morning, John and Jelly Bean. How you doing? Fine. How you doing, Richard? Pretty good, thanks. I've been good. waiting 30 years to talk to you, sir. Really? I That's mean, a long wait. I hope you don't have a big phone bill. <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> I mean, that could, you know. I, well, I just wanted to thank you for being such a great entertainer. I mean, you were my first inspiration to become an entertainer. Oh, really? And it's nice to see a decent entertainer instead of uh, people like the guy that's pulling around with his stepdaughter and the other one that was arrested for playing with himself. It's nice to have a decent, <laughs> decent man for the children to look up to. I wish Johnny Jelly Wing was back on the air. Oh, that's very nice of you. I really appreciate it. That's a very high compliment. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you for your call. Good morning, Barbara and Hull. You're on AM Live. Hi. Hull? I am just so excited to talk to you. Um, I was living in Toronto during most of the 80s, and I was in the record business, and I was at a, an album release party, and it just happened that our table consisted of about 16 ex-Montrealers. Really? We spent the evening talking about Johnny Jelly Bean, <laughs> the squawk box, Maury the Mailman, uh, uh, a little something from Baxter's Bakery. It just went on and on and on. Uh, and of course, the great. Torontonians had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> But it was wonderful, and I'm just so excited that you're back in Montreal. I'd like to know what happened with Peter Cullen. You two are a really, really good team on the Buddies. Peter's doing very well. He does voiceovers. He does announcing. He's one of the top announcers in Los Angeles Is now. Is he? Oh, That's yeah. Wonderful. He does wonderful he was, things. He's very two, bright. You two were just great. We had a lot of fun together. I too, wish yeah. that, that uh, somebody had some videos of of uh, the Buddies and, and all those shows, because yeah. I have a four-year-old now that would just delight in that stuff yeah that was that was fun i i wish they did too there, there isn't much video around because it was done live right I mean, well, most then. of it was done live yeah. but they had over a hundred tapes at one time oh, they really did and then they wiped them yeah what a shame yeah, yeah. okay it would have been fun to see them yeah for sure good morning paul and ndg you're on am live with ted ziegler hi hi paul uh, i'd just like to say hello i just have uh, memories of my uh, fifth birthday party really at the miss montreal miss restaurant. montreal yeah yeah and uh, you were there, and I still remember that. And I'm 30 years old now, so. I'll be darned. Yeah, <laughs> that's wild. I'd just yeah. like to thank you very much for. Uh, hey, my pleasure. That was those uh, memories. Yeah, Mr. Blutman owned it. Uh, you made me really day. laugh a lot. <laughs> oh, great! I'm glad to hear that. Right. Thank you. It was very nice of you to call in. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Peter, up in Ottawa. You're on AM Live. Good morning. Good morning, Peter. Uh, I think what we're forgetting is that those are extremely exciting times for Montreal and television. Yeah. You had Jim McKenna with Like Young. You had in radio. Absolutely. You had David Boxer with Dina Gopia. You right. guys owned that city, and I mean, we as kids in Park X, we felt like you belonged to us because I did. You know, no, we, we would run back we from did. Blessed Edmund Campion or yeah. all those places for noon and sit yeah. down and watch you suck down that Jello. It was great, you know. <laughs> but I mean, that that was the spirit. I remember CFCF yeah. was seemed to be the the the, the, uh, the center. For for so much at that time. It was so yeah. exciting to be around. And of course, you were a lifeline to the various entertainment venues. I mean, like, you know, the Beatles coming in and, yeah. and all this yeah. stuff. I mean, going out to Rockland Shopping Center and watching yeah. yo yo exhibitions yeah. because you didn't have the bucks to do anything else. We're yeah. all immigrant kids, you know? Right. Yeah. You know, that's uh. fantastic. I mean, oh, I met the director of your show because I'm in the industry now myself. We had several directors. Yeah, the last one you had, I forget his name, I'm sorry, a French-Canadian. He said, you guys used to throw that show together 15 minutes before oh, yeah. you went to air. It was mainly ad-libbed, absolutely, yeah. That was Jean de Villiers. Jean de Villiers, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Jean de Villiers. He was a producer director, yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks for your memories. Appreciate it. Yeah, that was nice. That was like a little recap exactly. of everything we had done. Years that was and 30 great. Seconds. Yeah. Good that morning, Eleanor in Beaconsfield. You're on AM Live. 
Hello. Hi, Eleanor. Oh, hi. Um, hi, Ed, Eleanor. I'm yeah. Eleanor Brown, and I am Bill Brown's sister-in-law. Oh, wow. Uh, Bill Brown. uh, brother Bob, who was young, the youngest boy in the family, really? was Bill's uh, brother. Now, yeah. uh, Bob died six years ago. I think Bill died uh, five years ago. Really? Wow. But I remember, I think one time they lined the squawk box with steel. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah, they and didn't... didn't they put a drink? You were always saying, uh -oh. water, oh, yeah. water, kids drink lots of water. Yeah. And I think there was gin in the glass one morning. Well, uh, I'm not sure about that. Everything, including, I think there was cyanide at one time. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I remember, and I remember uh, when Bill was in hospital and you used to go up and see him. I went up, well, I, I, I was out of town when, he, when that happened to He had right. a heart thing, but I just happened to be in town. Right. Uh, when he was in the hospital, I went to visit him, yeah. Right. Well, Bill Mame, was, uh, Mame and Barbara live in Toronto. Tom is there now, too. That's uh, his son. Oh, wow. And I was speaking to Tom maybe, oh, a couple of months ago. Bill uh, was, is a, uh, he'll always be a very close I know. memory to me. I know. Well, well, you guys really started the station, hmm. more or less. Right. Anyways, I'll let you go, and good luck in your future. Bye-bye. Thanks for your memories. We'll continue Thanks. now with, with Wendy in Saint Laurent. You're on AM Live. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, Wendy. Let me ask you, what do you remember about Johnny Jelly Bean? Oh, I remember coming home at lunchtime. It was like the thing of the day. We have to get home to watch Johnny Jelly Bean, <laughs> you know, and lunch wasn't the same without him. We had to sit there and have our lunch. It was just great. Um, speaking for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I have to explain something. I cry at circuses, you know. And, well, that's uh, okay. I cry at uh, tender things, too. Great. And I'm really pleased to see you on TV today, and I was waiting for you to come on Montreal AM, and I'm really glad to see you in Montreal. I wish Thanks. our children had the same opportunity to watch your show at their lunch hours, because I think it would make their day um, a lot happier and a lot, a lot more laughs. You're very here. nice of you. Thanks, Mom. Okay. <laughs> I think you speak for Take a lot of people of as yourself. well. Thank you very We're much. We're going to take a commercial break, and then we'll have more with Ted Ziegler yeah. right after this. I'm going to wring my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> when I was eight years old, I'd rush home from school just to catch the bean. The bean, the man, the legend. And I'd wear this hat. As a child, I used to rush home from school to watch Johnny Jellybean. It was a tradition. Every lunch hour was spent in front of the TV watching Johnny Jellybean. I didn't miss a day. Mm -hmm. 